Actually, you know who may be able to answer some of these questions is Adrian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and speaking of the man, here he comes. Hey. Okay, I'm going to go out so Adrian can come on top. Okay. okay, Adrian. Good morning, everybody. How's everyone going? Good, good. good. We're very uh, excited to have you on the show for a hey. longer period today. Just one moment. We are going back uh, on air in just a while, okay? okay? In 40 okay. seconds, we'll be back on air. We're just making okay, the... So seconds just to, so that you can catch up Adrian we're talking today about those uh, traineeships that have been offered by some 2,800 companies 19,000 traineeships um, the we've thought, got a few questions yeah the thought is yeah you know it is it is one way of keeping labor costs down no doubt um, but the the question is uh, can they move from one to another which we will deal with in a short while okay Alrighty. How many seconds do we have? We have 20 seconds to traffic. To Great. traffic. Okay. Cool. Are you, you going to stay here or are you going to come down? So? Oh. So after traffic, we will deal with the whole idea of how these traineeships work. Yeah, okay. Andre and FD feel it's cheap labor. Yeah. And I is. feel. But, but I'm is. not saying it's a bad thing. <laughs> yes, I'm not saying it's a bad thing either. No, but but uh, there are some details I'll just share with you a little bit on, okay? okay. Oh, great. Okay, stand yeah. by. Here we go. Traffic coming up. 1FM 91.3. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen. Glenn and the Flying Dutchman. Good morning, boys and girls. Good time. Good time. Good time. Good morning, Singapore. It's Glenn and the Flying Dutchman. We're working from home. Andre and Sean are in the studio. And guess who else is working from home? Our career strategist himself, Adrian Chu from careeragility.org, joining us for a longer period this morning. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning, guys. How's everybody? We're all fine, thank you. So, Adrian, we're talking today about uh, an article in today's paper. 2,800 companies offering 19,000 um, uh, traineeships. Uh, a way of keeping our unemployment numbers down for new graduates, which is good. I feel. And uh, honestly, it keeps labor costs down for a lot of companies, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. In fact, uh, I think it's a great initiative because if you've seen the onset of COVID-19, um, the government had put in GSS, the job support scheme, which covered 75 to 25 percent of the uh, worker salary, right? That covered people who were in jobs. So that kind of protected people who were already in jobs. Now, the, the reason, the rationale I can imagine why this new traineeship program was being rolled out it's because they want to protect as well those who are going to hit the job market. And it's going to be a nasty job market for fresh graduates. I mean, I, I graduated about three, six months before the Asian financial crisis in 98. So uh, it, was, it was nasty. No one could get jobs then, you see. So, right. so uh, I think they don't want a repeat of that because the last thing you want to have is, is a graduating cohort of, of individuals, graduates who cannot get paid, you know, no jobs at all, right? So this one, this traineeship program, for what I understand, and the details are a bit scant, but what I understand is that it's a it's, uh, number of jobs being uh, uh, created, but it's not really jobs, jobs. It's more like traineeship programs, more like apprenticeship for the individuals to try and experiment, to get into, uh, to see whether or not this is an industry they want to get into. But what is, what is really interesting about the whole concept of this traineeship is that the government is going to sponsor up to 80% of the individual salary. So for graduates, I understand they're going to pay up to 2500 uh, oh. For uh, diploma holders, I think it's up to 1,008, uh, thereabouts. The numbers are all, all out there. So what's happening is that you're going to see, uh, uh, yes, in a way, uh, FD is correct. It's going to be cheap labor, but it's cheaper, it's subsidized labor uh, from the government. It's going to pay it. The individual will still, I, I would imagine, get a similarly packed salary as if, as if it was a real job. Mm. Ah. That's what I was saying. As as long as as long as the um, you know the job applicants don't feel that they are cheap labor. I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> that makes it quite interesting, Adrian. Then, because let's say I spend the next two years trying out three different industries before I settle on what I want. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Or three. I say say two different. <laughs> uh, because I try this, I don't like it. I'm going to try something else. I don't like it. I'm going to try something else. I don't like it. That's what the traineeship is for, correct? In a way, yes. Um, but I don't know. From what I read, is that it's there is a there is a twelve month uh, period of support only. So I don't know whether or not if you leave that first traineeship, whether it applies to a second traineeship or a third traineeship. But mm -hmm. I would be very concerned if, if a person were to 
a fresh graduate would go through a three traineeships with three different companies in one year. It doesn't speak <laughs> well on his CV, right? Well, but probably, well, maybe not one year, but you would you would want to try it over two years, two and a half years. Yeah. If, and, so and, and if you ask me, I think it's perfectly okay if you wanted to do uh, to, to skip around like that because you want to experience and see what industry is good. But uh, in, in the long run, uh, you have to make up your mind. But but I like the concept of traineeship uh, if in the spirit of it because if you look at countries like Germany, they have a concept of apprenticeship where immediately after your polytechnic, right, you go straight into the industry and, and you're trained under a master, under, under, under someone who really knows his, his stuff. And, and you're going to get, you're going to learn a lot from the apprenticeship. So that's why Germany and many parts of Europe has a, has a very strong pool of engineers because that's how they train. Uh, it, it's not straight off to the job market. Uh, a lot of times, the first job you do, you get anyway after graduating. You kind of like just hang around it and, and just don't, don't learn many technical skills anyway, right? So, mm -hmm. so uh, a more, it's a more robust form of uh, traineeship. And uh, if you look at it in the right spirit or as an apprenticeship, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. So, the, it, so it works on the same model as medicine would work on. You study medicine, you do your internship in the hospital, you become a doctor. Correct. It's like lawyers do it too. Uh, yeah. Accountants do it too, get the CPA. So technically speaking, that's good. Now, if I do this traineeship and I've got all this training now, does that then affect what my starting salary in a permanent job would be? I don't know. You know, I uh, it's it's it's. I can I can imagine that if the if the training and if the understanding and, and uh, learning is great, I, I would pay more for someone who's got the, who has direct experience in the industry. I want to hire. So if I would push the guy over straight away, if I was if I was running a company. Hmm. Okay, seems like there are many skeptics uh, with regard to this. <laughs> Are you That's a skeptic, always, FD? They're always, they're always skeptics. Uh, especially Are you a skeptic? I, I, I'm not a skeptic of this, this training scheme. I, 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 think, I think a lot of people will not stay with one company though. Okay. They are going to try at least two before they settle down. I think as soon as uh, we're declared as a safe Singapore, you know, every, everything is going to go back uh, to normal in terms of, uh, you know, jobs and and what people want to do and stuff like that. So I think that's the reason why uh, the funding is just for 12 months. Mm. Because it's just, to, you know, it's just for this period, this period of time. Mm. Okay, I tell you what, uh, uh, let's uh, continue this conversation off air as we play your song from uh, El Debarge. This is Rhythm of the Nights on 1FM 91.3. Good times, greatest hits. Okay, let's get to that, that whole idea of the starting salary. Um, a fresh graduate was recently in the news uh, for turning down a permanent position because he felt the, the salary was too low. Clever thing to do, not a clever thing to do. I think uh, right now, uh, if, if that fresh graduate hasn't realized it right now, it's a pandemic. <laughs> there's a, there's a economic <laughs> crisis going on. Any job you get, I, I would just do it, you know. Uh, but it's it's it's. I do not know whether it is a symptom of of ge this this generation being a bit too picky, a bit too choosy. But uh, as long as a, it pays the bills, but b if it's something that can I can learn from and bring the add value add value to and uh, add value to my career, I, I would do it. So, uh, and there are, honestly there are very unrealistic expectations out there. Uh, prior to C nineteen, you would see graduates going like, "What you mean? It's 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 not." It's not going to pay me uh, three thousand five hundred or four thousand dollars. I don't want to join, you know. And and I would point, I would like to point the finger at this some of the big companies as well, who are just dishing out huge sum of sums of money for fresh graduates and spoiling the market. So I heard that that, that there is a huge bank, uh, American bank, that offers ten thousand dollars a month starting salaries for fresh graduates. Really? Yeah, I'm not kidding you. They highlight like about six or eight of them a year just to raise their profile of, of their organization, the company, mm. within the universities. They say, wow, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a branded. And everyone wants to clamor for them just to build a brand. It's crazy. It's supposed the market. And in small, uh, medium enterprises you know, uh, like, like us, you know, we even to fight for the kind of salary we can't. Mm. So it's, 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 it's a big challenge. But if there's a pandemic going on, there are no many, many jobs going on. If you have, a, if you have a, an offer that looks half decent, Pays the bills, you know, temporary. Even if it's temporary, just just go for it and learn. Just take it, unless of course your father is a millionaire, la. Exactly. So, <laughs> so this, uh, this is what some of our fans are saying. Corinne says, "What do you mean it's not important? It is 
because your last drawn salary will determine your next level salary. Yes, it's not supposed to matter, but it does. It's work reality. Hmm. Hey, but speaking of salaries, uh, Adrian, I just read hmm. somewhere, um, I don't know where I read this, but uh, when you apply for a job, apparently you're not required to reveal how much you were getting paid previously. According to Minister Josephine Teo, you don't have to uh, reveal. Mm, but right. uh, that's, that's a different story altogether. But, but uh, yeah, you don't have to reveal. But at uh, end of the day, as, as a headhunter, uh, as a hiring manager, I want to know anyway. Uh, okay. Because I want to make sure that you're not, I'm not underpaying you or, or, or in the sense, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I want to make sure that you're at the right level. Uh, okay. so, so there are various reasons why, why, why headhunters ask uh, the salary question of, uh, of you when, when they right. call you up. But now that we know that it's not, uh, you're not legally binding to do something like that, um, can a person then make up the amount? Because no. the, the person, the person then doesn't need to 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 give you his his uh, uh, pay slip anymore. Tenic right? Technically true. Technically true. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Stand by. We're okay. gonna come back on air, and then you can carry on this conversation huh, for our last talk right. set. Stand by. The Barge Rhythm of the Night right here on 1FM 91.3. Good times, greatest hits. It's Glenn and the Flying Dutchman. We're working from home along with Adrian Chu, our career strategist, uh, who is going to be our regular man every Thursday at 8 a.m. starting today. Okay. Um, the, the whole idea of, of uh, um, the, the, the starting salary. So, Adrian, what you're saying is as long as it pays the bills, take the job. In this current uh, economic current. market, yeah, go ahead and take, take the job. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be too fussy over salaries because if you if you think about it, as a fresh graduate, you're not being paid for for the contribution you can bring because honestly, there's not much contribution you can bring. You're being paid based on uh, what the potential you bring. Okay, so I would just take the lower salary uh, for the first year, outperform every one of my other competitors in the in in the cohort who are coming in. And, and then renegotiate a salary a year later or two and, and outshine everyone else. So it's just a foot in the door. If you're, if you're going to offer from a good company, jump in, pick it up, work hard and, and learn the ropes. And you know what? Even in the first or second year, even if you don't get promoted within the organization, the fact is if you have been conscientious, if, you have a, a, if, you've, if you've been learning, if you've been improving yourself, if you, if you have been proving yourself as a great asset uh, to the organization, you will be picked up quite easily two years later when the market picks up anyway because you have had the good experience and good exposure. Mm. So I would just say, go ahead. Um, Andre? Uh, Sarim, one of our fans is saying, your salary should be directly related to the cost of living. And for an example, um, in Australia, they have TAFE. It's, I think it's like our polytechnics where they will train young Aussies to be tradesmen such as welders, plumbers, carpenters. And when they eventually start work, they earn sufficient salary to sustain a nice lifestyle in Australia and also match the cost of living in Australia? I think uh, I would agree to that to a certain extent, but I think that the salary component reflects many things. It's not just the cost of living because otherwise, uh, hey, you know, I, I want to stay in a bungalow, so therefore you must pay me 20000 a month. So uh, it, it reflects a, the market supply of the talent, the market demand for the talent, how good you are, whether or not the organization is a big or a small one, whether or not uh, uh, there's a future demand there are a lot whole bundle of variables involved, so we can't. It's too. It's too uh, straightforward, too simplistic to say that it should be matched to the salary. Because right now, especially now with everyone going on Zoom and working from home, what has happened is that there is uh, your your jobs are a threat. There's a threat to your job because anyone can do your job now. They don't even need to be in Singapore, and and because you're, you're not even going to the office now. If you think about it, then our job, a lot of jobs are at risk. So if you go by the argument that you should be paid where the uh, based on your cost of living then i think we're all doomed because then then uh, people from third world countries if they can do our jobs okay come in and and, and then it, we, we, it's going to be difficult for us to compete on that so there's a whole bundle of, of variables involved when it comes to salaries so it's i think it's it's and don't forget you're competing against other people who are also wanting their job who do not mind getting a lower salary as well so it's not just the pricing, but I would like to say what is the value you can bring to the organization. If you want a higher salary, it's fine. But if you can prove during the interview that, you know, hey, I'm the guy, if, you're, it's a, if it's a sales job, you can say, hey, I'm the guy who can double your sales. The other guy maybe can just do 20%, 30%. But 
but I can double, triple your sales because in my previous job, I quadrupled the sales within six months. Then right. I, I wouldn't mind being, I, as a business manager, as a hiring manager, I wouldn't mind paying you a bit more. So, so the salary uh, uh, component is, is, is a lot of moving parts to it. Mm. Yeah, because we, I, I was having the same discussion with my daughter the other day about what the so-called laborer in Singapore gets and say, for example, bricklayers in Australia, because Australia, oh, wow. yeah, bricklayers, plumbers, uh, uh, electricians, they are considered specialists. Yes, right. Tradies, it's it's amazing. Mindset. It's the societal mindset. Mm. In, in Australia, these people are specialists. Here, they are just laborers. Yeah. So they Actually, do a menial job. So you know, we, we should we have. We should be like that, you know. I I feel then then we don't have to depend so much on on uh, you know foreign workers. Yeah, but we don't yeah. see that. We see a, a, an electrician and a plumber as some lowly guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure Andre will, you know, he will have no problems being a plumber. I or, think, uh, okay, being a plumber would be my dream job. Of course, uh, it's it's. I'm good and handy with my hands and, uh, and my toilet gets choked up all the time. So I've got lots of experience in that. So. Right. <laughs> and and you get paid well. <laughs> you get paid well, you know. You get 300 bucks a clear a choke. Uh. You yes, just and need to do one a day and that's it, no? And you know, but, I, have, I have a cousin who, who lives in Australia and uh -huh. he is a, a skilled plumber. So he does buildings and stuff like that. You know that yeah. they get paid from the moment they leave their home. Not when they're on site, okay? They get paid. Wow. So, so if you're calling a plumber, he'll tell you what time he's leaving his home. You pay from the time he leaves his home, get to your place, do, does the work. And comes back and just for him to get out the starting fees at least 120 bucks or something just to get out oh, yeah better because than lawyers now a specialist you see yeah and, and, and it's how we treat these people it's how we view yeah these people but the one thing i want to uh, say as well is that as much as we want to do that uh, there are realities involved as well <clears throat> so no it's like it's like people are saying the cleaning aunties and uncles in the in the food court should be paid more and i absolutely agree but are you then willing to pay $6, $7 for a bowl of noodles to support that kind of level? The answer is most Singaporeans say no. So where does the money come from? You see, So so for me, I do not mind paying $8. In fact, I, I think we should have a tipping culture for the aunties and uncles in the food court. Okay, Where, yeah. where if it comes clean, you put, just give her a dollar or two just on the table. I would love to do that, but I'm a bit embarrassed because the last time I tried it, auntie say, hey, but, uh, Uncle, uncle, and she calls me uncle, goodness. Says, uncle, <laughs> uncle, you, you, you left more money behind. And then I was too embarrassed to say, uh, it's for you. So uh, the, the least I do now, uh, and I've always been doing it, is, to, is when she clears my table, I look at her and I say, smile, I say, thank you, auntie, thank you, uncle, says here. And, and, but, but you know, the reality is we want to help, uh, but are we ready to pay the price? It's like construction workers, you want to pay them more. And then when the minister says the price tax uh, for houses is going to go up, people start complaining. So mm -hmm. it is a balance. It's difficult. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, we are we are speaking to Adrian Chu from uh, careeragility.org. Sean, do we have a bit of time? Because I've got another question for, for Adrian. We've got two minutes more. Ah, only two minutes. I mean, I can I give you, brought, I give, I give, I give. I should have brought this question up earlier then because <laughs> I wanted to talk about uh, sexism in the, uh, in the office place, in the workplace. If you want, we can take a break and come back and discuss about that. Or we can talk about this next week. Up to you. You're the boss. You're the supreme leader. <laughs> the supreme leader, yes. I think that it's strong enough to hold for next week. I really do. Sexism in the workplace doesn't even exist. Because now that, that we have female empowerment and all that, right? Um, you know, do we still have sexism? Has it gone the other way around? Yeah, and I have very <laughs> controversial views on that, actually. Uh, on the gender pay gap and everything. So, yeah, the, I think it, it warrants an episode by itself. I would love to have that. <laughs> okay, so, it's a date. It That's is a date, date, right? With uh, Adrian Chu. But you can't say what? date. It's going to be sexist to say date. So you can. It's a. It's a. It's, a, it's an arrangement. <laughs> it's, a it's a promise. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adrian. Tell everyone how they can uh, get in touch with you because I think there are many people who are tuned in right now uh, who may have left comments uh, uh, on our page, and I'm sure um, Andre sees quite a lot of them. Yes. And you might just go back there and and um, you know reply to their questions. But if uh, they want to get in touch with you via email, how can they do that? Well, they can reach me at adrian at careeragility.org or uh, if you're already on Facebook, you can just go jump on Career Agility International. Uh, we have a Facebook page there. You can like it and uh, you can just leave me messages over there. And if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to email me. And uh, I'm also on LinkedIn, so just buzz me anytime. Okay. Uh, one last thing because we still have a little bit of time. For those people who have somehow 
you know, quit their jobs for various reasons uh, at this point in time, but are now looking for jobs. Do you have any words of encouragement for them? Well, I think it's it's a tough market, but the market is still moving and it's begun to move. That we, see, we are seeing signs of life. We are seeing recruiters calling people up. We are seeing uh, headhunters calling. Uh, we are seeing ads being placed. So, and, and in fact, four, or just last month, four, four of our clients have landed jobs. Okay, better paying jobs, in fact. So, so the market is, is loosening up. Uh, my advice is stay networked, uh, keep, an eye on, keep an eye on opportunities. Do not be discouraged because mm. the moment you're discouraged and you start on a spiral of despair, uh, it's going to be hard to climb up from it. So just take it as a short break, uh, charge up, reskill if you have to, catch up on your HBO, catch up on your Netflix. <laughs> and then uh, when, when the market picks up, you know, go for it and, and, and things will go back to normal again. Even though it's the new normal, as they say, uh, the jobs will, will be there in one form or other. So just hang in there and uh, just keep pressing on. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Adrian. I'm sure you know, many people who are tuned in uh, you know, have been encouraged by your words and uh, have been assured and, and, and once again, I mean, please feel free to get in touch with uh, Adrian. He, he mentioned earlier on, Adrian at careeragility.org. If you have any questions whatsoever and uh, if you're looking for a job, I mean, they can also get advice from you, right? Oh, yes, for sure. Just uh, visit the website or just reach out. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Adrian. We'll see you again next week for our date. I, I mean, our arrangement <laughs> uh, at 8 a.m. <laughs> next Thursday. We'll talk about looking sexism in the workplace oh that'll be awesome looking forward to it guys have a great week ahead all right you too, you too. okay bye, -bye. bye. take care it is 8 19.